All right, transom repair day two. So we got uh, all this painted, we got all the uh, trim boards painted. We're gonna go ahead and dry fit those in here as they were. And then uh, we're gonna get some measurements so we can cut out some new plywood. Um, this looks like it's gonna be about two, three quarter inch pieces. It goes in here, we'll glue those together. We're gonna epoxy seal all of that. So we're just gonna use regular plywood, not pressure treated. Uh, we got this all painted up. We just have this sitting in here, that uh, bracket. So we're gonna measure for the wood. Uh, we do have this angle to deal with, but don't worry, it's not gonna be a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the bottom half. All right, that's about uh, 47. And we're gonna measure the top. Do it this way, from that angle. You wanna get up in this channel. Get up in there. Nine and a half. So 47, 59 and a half. And from the bottom of the bracket to the top of the inner channel, 11, 11 and a half. You gotta leave a little clearance. So 11 and a half. So let's write that down. We'll get that drawn out on the plywood. I'll show you how we cut this. So, we know this is going to be 11 and a half tall, 59 and a half on the top, 47 inches on the bottom. So this is going to make a odd shape, All right? something like that. So that's your 11, that's your 59 and a half, and this is our... 47 so in order to get that on the plywood here. We don't need crazy angle tools or anything like that <clears throat> What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure up 11 and a half on Both sides here All right, so that's our 11 and a half I'll Just go ahead and pop this with a chalk line So we know. There we go. Okay. So you just gotta subtract the fifty nine and a half by forty seven. Right? So use your calculator. Clear fifty nine point five minus forty seven. That equals 12.5. Divide that by two, six and a quarter. So we need to come six and a quarter in from the edge. Right there. That is our six and a quarter mark. So this is our angle. Six and a quarter, right there. That's it, and then we're gonna do the same over here. We'll hit our. So we come in six and a quarter. There's that line. Connect the dots. That's it, guys. So this is our forty-seven. check it there you go hopefully you can see that on the camera but that's 47 and that top line 59 and this is our you know, chipped up wood right there but our 11 and a half so we're gonna cut this out we're gonna double it up glue it together, 
screw it together, mount it in the boat. So <clears throat> we got the one piece that we drive fit, so we're just going to use that as a template. I'm going to trace it. And then we'll cut that out. So now we got both pieces. All right, we'll glue them together. This is just wet, but let's, I mean, uh, this is just a dry fit. Let's see how it comes together. Getting around that aluminum is going to be a pain. So we got this little, where this is bent right here. So we're going to have to unbend that to get the wood in there. Well, there's not going to grip under that lip. It's gonna need a little encouraging, I think. <clears throat> the previous owner tightened the motor down with a rotten transom which bent back the aluminum channel which is why these things need to be repaired all right that's feeling pretty good and this is why you dry fit the stuff you see that it's under there so we're still gonna have to brazen that out Okay, so we got our two pieces here uh, cut out. We did the drive fit to make sure that they fit in the boat. So what we're going to do now is uh, we also routered them so they have nice flush edges. So they're both pretty identical. It's going to fit more smooth in there. So we're going to take some uh, liquid nail is what I got. Heavy duty construction adhesive, strong permanent bond will outlast other projects, waterproof and weatherproof. So this is probably pretty good. We're going to glue these together, um, clamp them, put a couple screws in as well, uh, and let that dry. And then when that dries, we're going to hit it with the, uh, with the Bondo. If you're wondering why I use my caulk gun this way, it's because I broke the cap off, the nozzle off, <laughs> trying to use it. Sit and 
this is going to be indestructible. Okay, so I got this all glued together, the two of them, and I dry fitted it in here. And what I think I'm going to do is before I uh, let's see if I pull the camera back here. So we got all the holes where the rivets went. I think this was the handle. These are the rivets that hold in the channels. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill these holes into the wood. And then when I put the fiberglass resin over the wood, it'll be more secure. Otherwise, I'm going to put the resin on, and then I'm going to drill holes. And when I drill holes, we're not going to have the resin. So this is the way I'm going to do it. smooth make sure the um, <clears throat> surface area doesn't have any contaminants that'll hinder the fiberglass resin from gripping exterior home use it says right here Bondo fiberglass resin creates a waterproof durable repair to small and large gaps holes cracks splits rust outs or gouges in pools boats metal doors door frames sheds wheelbarrows play equipment or any fiberglass metal wood or concrete surface do not use on surfaces where food will be prepared so there you go guys this is made for waterproofing things like boats and metal and wood so that's what we're going to use so uh, again, you can get this at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, basically anywhere. Um, you have to mix the resin with a hardener. So uh, I'm going to eyeball it, mix a little, put it on as you need it, otherwise it's going to harden. I'm going to do it with a super cheap chip brush, pouring it into a little bucket. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this set up and then we'll be back. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna mix. Remember, it's gonna mix small. <clears throat> that is pretty stinky.
See, it's starting to harden up on me. So this is the new wooden transom with the two coats of Bondo fiberglass resin on it. Zoom in here to see if you guys can see it. I mean, uh, you can really feel it. I mean, this thing is coated. You can see, hopefully you can see the gloss there. I mean, this thing is solid, y'all. I mean, hey, that's, I mean, you can kind of see it there. So this thing, no water is going to get through this. This is going to be great. Okay, guys, quick little update here. So we went to dry fit this in. And the top of this, I guess now, maybe with the Bondo, but uh, it's just slightly too tight at the top of that channel for the channel's not really gripping over it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to router down a little bit of this. It's going to create a little lip. We're going to rebondo that so it's all sealed. Then we're going to get it in. Here we go. Do not use this as a routering demonstration.